Greetings, friends of typography. Type specimens are usually collected because of the typefaces inside them. But the way that the type specimens are being produced and designed can be interesting as well. In this episode, we take a look at a few unusual type specimens. And yes, these glasses play a role as well. How? Just stay tuned and find out. We start with one of the biggest type specimen books ever produced. This book from the German Stempel Type Foundry weighs over 7 kilograms and was published around 1925. It contains around 1500 pages, many in multiple colors. The foundry's print shop probably took years to produce this type specimen book. Handling such a large book is far from easy. It would have been much easier and much more user-friendly to split the content into multiple volumes. But putting it all in one book is of course a clear statement. It's supposed to tell the customers there is only one type foundry that offers such a large collection of fonts. The biggest hardcover type specimen book in regards to the page size that I could find is this interesting Dutch book from the 19th century. We even need to put it sideways on the shelf at our printing museum in Weimar. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to close the doors of the bookcase. The biggest poster in our collection is from the type foundry URW. Just as with the large type specimen book from the Stempel foundry, choosing such a large size is probably meant as a way to hint at the size of the font collection. Type specimen collectors need a lot of space when they acquire this complete type specimen collection of linotype photo typesetting fonts. Working with this type specimen collection is very easy. The transparent cases and the color coding make it easy to browse the collection and the prints can just be taken out. It's also useful and noteworthy that the entire character set is shown for each font. Often type foundries would avoid showing the entire character set, especially in larger sizes, in order to prevent other type foundries from copying the design directly from the type specimens. The smallest type specimens I could find are these two. One for the metric typeface and one little booklet for Mac Rhino fonts. Both are just around 6.5 cm in height. There will always be surprises when you buy used books. A typical unpleasant surprise that is common with type specimen books is cutouts. For print shops, type specimens were just a tool to choose fonts, not a collector's item. A rather unusual surprise was waiting in this type specimen book from the type foundry Ludwig and Meyer from the 1930s. Someone used all the empty pages as a painting ground. How about that? We could also talk about the page layout of type specimen books for hours and show many examples. But one type specimen book that really stands out to me in this regard is this book from the American type founders presenting Gaudi typefaces. Just look at the elaborate letterpress typesetting using various text frame shapes. Now we take a look at another famous type specimen book. And this also demonstrates how powerful type specimens can be as a marketing tool. The foundry underwear had an interesting idea for their type family sauna. They produced a type specimen book that actually can be read inside a sauna. 
the book was designed to withstand a sauna bath without damage. It is resistant to hot steam of 120 degrees Celsius. And some parts of the book use special ink that only makes certain content visible when the temperature is above 80 degrees Celsius. So not surprisingly, this type specimen is now also a collector's item. This is a folder I bought recently, containing type specimens from the type foundry Brüder Butter. When I saw the offer that didn't contain any pictures, I bought it immediately, not really knowing what I would get. And to be honest, I still don't fully know what I got. The folder contains all sorts of prints from the foundry. Letterheads, greeting cards, type specimen posters and so on. Printed matter produced over several decades going all the way back to the 19th century when the foundry was started. It is one of the most unusual and most interesting items in my collection. Unlike most type specimens, it doesn't look like something the foundry would have sent out to clients. So maybe it came from inside the foundry and it documented all the prints the foundry's print shop was creating over the years. But that's just a guess. If anyone knows more, feel free to let me know. This is a set of type specimen postcards for typefaces from Mark Simonson. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate the effect in a video, but I can tell you it's quite fun to try it out with all the cards. And when you receive these cards in the mail, it's almost impossible not to try it out. So as advertising, it really works. Type specimens don't always have to be printed matter. Have a look at these two examples. The French type foundry production type created a type specimen toy truck for one of their typefaces. And a few years ago, Monotype sent out an egg cup as advertisement for their typeface between. And by the way, if you are watching this episode right after its release during the month of June, please have a look at my current Kickstarter campaign. With your support, I want to create an online platform just for type specimens. For all type specimens ever published. On this platform, you will be able to get information about the type specimens and you will be able to view and download them. Or we will direct you to other websites and archives where the type specimens you are interested in are available. I hope you like the idea and if you do, I hope you support this project.